Media Dodger Media Media Dodger! Alright, what kind of Kris Kringle Christmas crap am I going to endure this time? Well, you know what? I'm going to sit through two holiday specials. And no, I don't mean Christmas movies, none of that. I'm talking about two TV specials for Christmas. And not just that, I'm watching... Two Christmas specials that have often been dubbed among the worst TV specials of all time. Exhibit A, The Christmas Tree. It aired once in 1991 and never again since. That's a good sign. You want to know what's even more shocking? The special was actually a first release, direct to video, exactly 10 years before a major catastrophe befell New York City. That right there begs for apocalypse. Now don't give me this coincidence bullcrap. They knew. They knew by releasing on that day. Why am I even trying to make sense of this? Let's just watch. Well, it certainly knows how to start off on the wrong foot. This animation is garbage. Absolutely embarrassing. There's hardly any expression or actual movement from these cells. And the character designs stink on freaking ice. I especially don't like their eyes. It's like these kids are staring into your soul. Especially in this shot when they all smile like bored serial killers. Or perhaps worshippers of a dark cult. Anyway, here's the best way to summarize this prologue. The story is set in an orphanage run by the wicked old Mrs. Mavilda. Of course, it's that classic trope that we're all sick of. And every now and then, she dresses him up in nice clothes for the mayor's occasional visits. Thinking Mavilda's taking good care of the children, the mayor gives her money to support the orphanage, but instead she uses it all for gambling. All the children have for hope is this pine tree outside their window they call Mrs. Hopewell, believing that someday this tree would deliver them from their misery, and their only friend is a stray dog named Licorice, whom Mavilda wants sent to the pound. If this isn't the setup for one of the worst specials on TV, I don't know what is. Let this opening set the tone for the rest of the special. Next, we see a family of four looking for a job in town, and eventually the husband gets a job at the lumber mill, but while he needs to live in the boarding house alone, the rest of the family will spend time at the orphanage so the mother can become Mrs. Mavilda's assistant. But once the narration is done, we run into another problem among many, the voice acting for the characters. I'd better go now. Take good care of yourself and the children, Judy. Goodbye, children. Be good. I can... Put that old mattress on the floor for the children, and we will be just fine. Hold it! They're going to stay with the other children and under the same rules and regulations. Come, children. Follow me. Another thing. You have to get up at seven. Hang on. Did you hear that? Follow me. Another thing. It's not just the voice acting that sucks, but the audio files are a nightmare. Want to hold my teddy bear? No, Lily. What kind of budget was this special made on for it to sound like that? But if you think I'm done with the voice acting, there's more problems than just bad acting, even coming from the children. I knew we should have never shown him to your mother. I always feel so sorry for him. Sometimes the voices don't even fit. When I'm scared, I think about her branches like arms holding me. I wish I could read so I could read her story from this old book that I found. I want a brand new doll with pink ribbons in her hair. Looking at these credits, it seems like some of the actors are related to each other, hidden by the same last name between some. Now, I wonder if any of these child actors are also related to any of the crew. I'm not saying that would necessarily leave a negative impact on the final project. 27 years later, Joe Brown would make an animated show featuring the voices of the staff's children. What we have here in the 90s is just a crappy example. So the mother, named Judy, is introduced to Mrs. Hopewell by the children, and she gets to work on a swing set and a slide for this tree, all made of wood. You know, because she would love to be surrounded by some of her dead brethren. As time passes on, the children start to love Judy, and very soon Christmas was around the corner, meaning there just may be a shred of hope. This year I've collected more money for the children's Christmas. I've got enough money here to get the children new clothes. And still some left for their Christmas presents. What was with that pause in between sentences? I've got enough money here to get the children new clothes. And still some left for their Christmas presents. Here you go, Mrs. Mavilda. Here's the two bags. You gotta love how he never refers to a specific currency and instead states his money in bags. 
Is it too much of a stretch to say that the currency in this story is dollars? They're all speaking with American accents. But Mavilda, of course, is going to use that money for gambling. And it's now when I notice another problem, the lip sync. Frank, Mavilda, do you feel lucky tonight? <laughs> Good, darling, because we're going to have a game tonight. What is she, a cartoon character or a Muppet? In next scene, Judy starts talking to the other kids about Christmas, since apparently they've never had Christmas in this crap hole of an orphanage. Christmas is a pretty and happy time of the year. A time when people get together. Friends with friends, children with their parents and grandparents. Hey, easy there. You're talking to kids whose parents probably got shot in an alley, or maybe died in a car accident, or maybe perished in a fire that destroyed their entire house. But during the gambling, Mavilda bets all her money and loses it. But while giving instructions, just one slip-up gave her big secret away. I don't want the children playing outside anymore. You better make sure of that! Because you don't want the mayor to see them without new clothes. All right! Now you know. And now that you know, you better make sure you don't tell him a thing. Or you and your children are out in the cold. <laughs> Once Judy's gone, Mavilda worries about the secret getting out and starts hatching an evil plot to get rid of her. What if I make that good girl into a bad one? <laughs> yeah! I'll make her into a thief, just like I did with the girl that worked with me before. So she's done this before, huh? She really is one evil woman, isn't she? She calls her henchmen because we just need something to complete the cartoon villain, and tells her about her plan to frame Judy for theft and cut down the tree for wood. But because of an eavesdropper, the kids find out what she's up to and start making plans to put a stop to it. They decide to go to the North Pole to see Santa Claus for help, but there's one problem. But I don't know where the North Pole is. Do you? <laughs> he knows where the North Pole is. I should know. I speak... dog. So the blonde kids take off on a sled pulled by Licorice, and apparently he doesn't know the first thing about eye contact when listening to someone. Don't be mad, Pappy. I just had to come. We can look after each other. Santa will listen to me. And besides, I brought the food. What was he even staring at this whole time? Just as they find a sign leading to the North Pole, they're suddenly attacked by Baloo the Bear! Uh, they really couldn't color a polar bear? That's literally the easiest bear to color! Oh, wow. Funny, I don't hear any sound. Let me, uh... Help me, Pappy! Help me! Oh, I was just deaf. Can I be deaf again so I don't have to hear more awful voice acting? Pappy! You kids had no problem screaming before. Why now are you so restrained? Then in a battle of bear versus dog, the dog wins in a very cartoonish fashion. That's the only way I can explain it. stand the awful voice acting much longer. Is it too much to ask for to get the kids vocal training before the recording session? Is it too much to demand to have some emotion? You're fired! I don't want to see your face another minute! Get out! What an attempt to completely destroy my TV speakers right there. Mavilda calls her henchman again and has him bring his chainsaw and attempt to cut down the tree, but the kids and Judy stand in protest. Frank? Turn on that machine and do the job. But, but, they're surrounding the tree. Those fools will move away. What is the meaning of this? Hey, where'd the snow go? Oh, there it is. Right back in the next shot. Mommy, mommy. But where's Lily? Where is she? She's gone, mommy. Oh, God, what do you mean? Ray. Where'd he come from? What kind of sloppy writing is this for him to just show up like that? She fell from a cliff, Mommy Daddy, all the way down, and I couldn't find her anymore. Their reactions to hearing of the missing child is the best part, though. That's totally how I would react. What happened with the money that I've been donating? Why didn't Mavilda buy toys for them? And look at them! 
They look like they haven't had new clothes in years. What if the inspector were to come? You gotta love how that's the main thing he's concerned about, especially since he's so lax about the conditions on which he gives the bags of money. He walks in, sees only two kids dressed in nice clothes, which is the same thing every visit, and that's all. What a crappy mayor. Your tree, uh, I mean, Mrs. Hopewell is going to be all right. That's what you think, children! But just as Mavilda is about to cut down the tree, Thor launches a bolt right at her. Talk about deus ex machina. Around that time, Santa Claus stops by. Ho ho! Merry Christmas, everybody! Stereotypical Santa voice, yeah, just what I expect. Mrs. Hopo shines bright with light, and Lily is brought back to her mother by this creepy-looking Coca-Cola corporate Santa Claus face. Presents are delivered to every house. Mrs. Hopo is declared the official city Christmas tree. Judy is put in charge of the orphanage, and apparently they can't do math. Because you'll be busy helping me raise nine children. Nine children? But Ray, we only have two children. Do you mean that? Hang on, let me count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's only seven kids, you idiot! But anyway, Mavilda, who somehow survived the Thunder Blast, is now working as the assistant with a changed heart. Well, don't worry about Mrs. Mavilda. She's good now. She learned that you always win when you are good. And I sat there 42 minutes just for that. You told me the message of the special is that you always win when you're good. Well, gosh, just stop it. Man, screw this special, man. I mean, it'd be more fun to step on Christmas ornaments barefooted than sit through this whole thing. I'd rather bend over to have Chevy Chase shove an entire Christmas tree up my butt. I mean, the things that the people did to get this special made just plain sucks. The sad part is that even though this special is an abomination to mankind, it's not the only thing considered the worst Christmas special of all time. There is another. I did say that this was a double feature, so here it is. Exhibit B, Rap City Street Kids Believe in Santa. This one came out in 2002, and like the Christmas tree, it only aired once and never again after that. It was never released on video, and it was only brought into our minds because a copy of the special was uploaded on Vimeo in 2015. Just one look at it, and you can tell it sucks. It looks so freaking cheap. I don't even need to comment. It crafts for the birds. Surprisingly, the budget for this special is higher than you think. $650,000. It doesn't even look like $1,000. Well, I believe there is one root cause for this. The casting. This special features the names of high-profile actors, including Mark Hamill, Walter Jones, Jody Benson, Paige O'Hara, and Nancy Cartwright, who was also credited as a producer. What, was Alan Smithy unavailable? Alright, now that we got the bullcrap out of the way, let's get into more bullcrap. We fade in, and the first thing we hear is a musical track that's trying to sound like Danny Elfman's compositions. <laughs> Guess those producers really beat them to kidnapping the Santa Claus. That's the perfect soundtrack to a crappy, blocky looking town. Next, we see a school bus pulling in a street, looking like it's on fire on the back, and a character immediately starts dropping the rhymes. It was the week before Christmas that I'm talking. I spent the day shopping with my grandma walking. Get used to hearing this quite a lot. I've been a good boy through the year, you better know it. Get ready, Santa Claus, to start decking the halls with gifts from my Christmas list. There should be a name for this kind of rap. I have the perfect name. It's called Ka Rap. Also, creepy smiles. That's always nice. Guy, go any slower? Mama, I miss you big. So here's the gist. Ricky received this bear as his mother's final gift, and he wants to give it to his classmate. Ah, get back! Next, we see them going to Rhapsody Street Elementary. Their motto is striving for excellence. 
You should start by spelling excellence correctly. With that, we have more awful animation. What kind of moment is that for the dinosaur to be traveling in after being thrown by this one kid who has a scarf over his mouth? And more importantly, what's up with that kid having a scarf over his mouth? Is it because they couldn't afford to animate the mouth? What's that? Not enough? How about bad animation accompanied by crap? I'm a decorating master, no one is faster. Don't you know, I'm a Christmas tree blaster. Did I forget to mention how awful the jokes are too? For context, Ricky ends up tripping over shoelaces and causes the ornaments to fall off the tree in the laziest way possible. That's a tough break, Ricky. No, man, that's a lot of tough breaks. <laughs> all over the place. Hey, Ricky, good job. Looks like you made a smash hit already. I could go on and on about the animation. Like during recess when the kids throw snowballs at each other, all logic dictates that a snowball would break upon impact with a human body. But not in this movie. Plus, what is this movement meant to simulate laughter? And then we have whatever this is for a tackle. But they get a load of this bullcrap. Ouch! Ow! Ow! Miss Parmington, get him away from me! Get him away from me! That means he likes you. Thanks a lot, teacher. Now this kid's gonna grow up a rapist. Sorry if I keep bringing up the animation, but look at this part where this guy comes in. Hello, sir. I hope you have a really, really happy holiday. Why, thank you, Lene. I'm too lazy to turn my head in the proper direction. It's been 14 minutes since the special started and we barely have any plot. Hardly anything happens. But finally, we get to something that was set up at the beginning. Ricky giving the bear to Nicole, the rich snob who only cares for expensive things. Have you lost your mind? Are you purposely trying to embarrass me? I can't even exchange this nasty old thing. Ricky runs off upset, while Nicole throws the bear in the dumpster. Then we go back to the suburban neighborhood, which is filled with a bunch of stock JPEGs of Christmas decorations. You're telling me this was allowed to air on TV? It wasn't on the internet first? I'm shocked. Could things get any more low quality? Oh, <laughs> see, kids nowadays. Uh, what's going on with that woman? Did she have a stroke? What do you think Santa will bring you this year? <laughs> you still believe in Santa Claus? That's so last year. I suppose the Tooth Fairy still comes for your baby teeth. <sighs> Jeez, Nicole, do you have to be such a poopy head? Look at me, look and you'll see. What? It's a musical? Only 17 minutes in, and already we have a musical number. It's not like the rapping, that's just done in the context of the story. This is a complete musical number, with a crappy song and equally lazy cinematography and movement. The way this special is animated, musical numbers are impossible to pull off. Look at how limited this choreography is. How are they expected to make this look good if the animation in the rest of the special is terrible? Hey, thanks, Santa Claus. You're the best guy, the best guy that I know. Hmm. You still believe in Santa Claus? That's so last year. Hey, thanks, Santa Claus. You're the best guy, the best guy that I know. What the heck am I missing here? You can't just go from dissing Santa Claus to suddenly praising him in a song. You can't just cheat character development like this. This song goes for three minutes. It'd be more fun to stick thumbtacks in your eyeballs laced with gasoline. After we're done with that, Nicole goes outside to notice a letter written by Ricky, which he was going to mail, but ended up losing it. Even Nicole gave her my special bear that mommy Oh no, Ricky. What have I done? Too late for that, Nicole. Okay, serious question. What's with this old woman? Oh. See, <laughs> Here's an answer. It was rumored for a while that the audio file just got corrupted. But actually, it was like that on purpose. What were they thinking? Why make one character's voice line so screwed? What does it add? How are we supposed to take this special seriously if one of the characters got a stroke that resulted in speech impairment this bad? Even Boomhauer is more decipherable than this. 
Well, after that, we see Ricky's friends looking for his bear in the dumpster, but no luck. They decide to look in the basement area, and we get a bunch of these creepy shots. They freak me the heck out! After that, they look at the junkyard, but they gotta contend with some guard dogs. Plus, this girl's just flailing her arms. <laughs> you must smell like dog food! Hey, now what are you gonna do? The doggies are gonna- What? You're telling me you're afraid of dogs that small? Are you kidding me? Is it- would it be too much trouble to make them bigger? Or, at the very least, design a breed that would actually make sense for this scenario? Dude, look at the babies afraid of some little doggies. They were made to small on purpose! But the way they deal with the situation is quite simple. Smithy throws a sandwich at one of the bullies to divert the dog's attention to them instead. They were freaking hypocrites. They were making fun of those kids for being afraid of some little doggies, and yet they're running away from those same doggies. But then they find the teddy bear lying out in the open on top of a car. Who put it there? What an a-hole. But then Nicole makes it back to the neighborhood so she could give the bear back to Ricky, who insists that she keeps it. But doesn't it mean a lot to you? Yes. And so does friendship. Was it too much trouble to just cut the scene after the line was spoken? Did you really need that piece of music to play out first? Enjoy missing feet? Well, take that, you freaking foot fetish freaks. Have fun with this. Uh, okay, this is a bit too much. We're talking about stopping foot fetish. That doesn't mean you have to chop off the entire legs. Hi, sweetheart. I understand you can use- ah, Monster! That guy's eyelids, just- What laziness resulted in this? How could they let something like this slip by? Basically, Lene's father is trying to help her gain her belief in Santa back, which soon results in- <sighs> Another crappy song that's just as bad as the last one. Daddy, will you try and help me understand? How much longer is this special? Only 10 minutes? What else is left? The main focus of the story has already been taken care of. What more do we need? No surprises there. That's how I get most of my suits. <laughs> okay, now I'll be able to sleep at night. Mark Hamill's been reduced to... Complete crap. How did so many high-profile actors get shafted like this? Then as she unwraps her Christmas gifts, Nicole finds that she had accidentally gotten a video box that Ricky wanted, so she goes over to his house to give it to him. Santa made a terrible mistake. He sent this present to the wrong house. So I ran over here as fast as I could. No, you walked the whole way there as normal as however the special defines normal. Then for some reason, the friends and the families of the friends all gather at Lene's house. Do they really not have much other family to celebrate Christmas with? Also, what about Smithy's family? We've never seen any of them. Ah, oh, well, screw it. Do you know what, Nicole? I never stopped believing in Santa. She can talk? She's alive! She's alive! <laughs> Christmas! <laughs> So, what's the best way to end a crappy Christmas special? With a crappy closing line. And a Merry Christmas to all. Shut that door. Wow, they got real lazy. All they had to do was cut that last line out and it would have been a lot less jarring. Also, that door been open this whole time? I'm real glad that's over, but then they advertise in the end credits that the Rhapsody Street Kids will return an Easter special called A Bunny's Tale. Thank goodness they're not James Bond, so that never happened. Well, that's my suffering. I don't know what more you want me to say. I just sat through two of the worst Christmas specials of all time. They were both terrifying to look at. I never want to see either of them ever again. Well, anyway... See you in 2024. Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. And if you can't sleep at night after what you just saw, then take some pills or something.